Alright guys, before we get into analysing the Seagulls vs Raiders game, I just need to jump in and talk about what the cash out means. What a cash out means, what a cash cow, the difference, right? If we're, going to, if we're going to pick a cash cow, we want them to be able to score well, make money, and then we can use that cash that they've generated. So if they're a 228k player, they gain 200k, 428. Awesome. We use, we're going to trade them out now, and we're going to use that 200k that they've made to get to a better player, whether it be 600k plus player, or we're going down to a cash out, which would be a 228k player, so the lowest possible price. The reason that I selected Blake Taffe this week over Savage is because one is probably going to score better, which is what I've you know, told everyone. That's probably going to work out, uh, probably going to work out best. But the reason is, yes, Savage is going to play more games, but he's in a worse team. He's not going to be scoring too well in general, right? But the real reason is, if we go into our teams, right? So this is a people squad. If we go through how many of these guys are going to be in our top 17, we can do that right now. So we can go through our, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Johnson Hughes, 7, Raymond Navrilo, 9, Walsh, Trebojevic, 11. Then you go to the bench, we've got Haas, 12, Moses, 13, uh, Braley, 14, Peachy, 15, Hines would be 16, Schuster could be 17, we have Teddy, could be 18, and then you've got someone like Gamble, who's averaging 50 at the moment, that could be 19, uh, and then you've got well, that'd be 20, would it? Yeah, 20, and then you've, uh, sorry, 19, and then you've got Verils, and you've got Blake, right? If it gets into round 18, yes, there might be one or two restings, and it might be important to have an extra player in round 18 if there's a few restings from Origin, for example, but if majority of people back up, even if, okay, we have 16 players next week, if Tafe doesn't play, okay, fair enough, but from then on in, we don't need Savage to play, like, What's, what's the point of him making money, you know, a little bit, 100k, 50k, whatever it is, just sitting in the emergencies. We're not taking his score, and we're not going to trade him out. So why wouldn't you get the guy that's going to score the best this week and possibly will play next week if they have Latrell out? You know, if, he's, if Latrell's out, he's going to play one next week as well. So why wouldn't you pick up someone you think is going to score better? So I had so many people push back on me on the Savage versus Blake Taffe um, decision. And I suppose a lot of them didn't actually understand what the re real reason of a cash out is. What you're doing in a cash out, you're you're banking that cash. If you're trading, you know, if you just say you traded Schuster out for Blake, you know, you're banking uh, 360k there, right? You can use that 360k to upgrade somewhere else. That's the point, right? So you trade him down, and then you can upgrade Hines, you can upgrade Braley, you can upgrade any of these guys to whoever the hell you want because you've picked up 300k or 360k in the bank. Does that make sense, guys? That's the point. You're dropping down to a guy that's going to play one game in this round 17, maybe round 18 as well. That could be helpful. And then you will not see him again. So that's the point of a cash out. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, rewatch this. <laughs> All right, Seagulls, Raiders, let's jump in. We had a couple of random big scores from two guys that are very fantasy irrelevant at this stage. But um, yeah, Dylan Walker was 65 and Sam Williams was 76. So both scored tries. Both had really good games. Let's move along. Joshy Hodgson, 613k, picked up a 64. So he was someone that scored, you know, we talked about a couple weeks ago leading into round 16, that he would be a bit of a smoky option as someone who's going to score well for the buy, this, this buy round especially, but, you know, could possibly be a keeper. But my decision was that he'd be a little bit under the rest of the hooking options in terms of being the top level gun. You know, when you've got Damian Cook, you've got Ben Hunt, these types of guys, I'd be selecting them before Hodgson. But he did do well. Picked up his 64, um, you know, some kick meters, some running, good running meters in there. 42 tackles, no misses. Can't really complain there at all. Emery Gula was 63. So that was uh, a great game from him and someone who hasn't done a lot this year. He's averaging sort of high 30s, but, you know, to see a 63 is good. Olaquatu, a few people have been talking to me about. He had a bit of a lower game last week, but 63 this week with a try. This was really solid across the park with 41 in base. Getting a try there bumps him up to 63. I'd personally said he probably wasn't going to be an option because are you going to be trading him out in four to five weeks after he makes a little bit more cash? He is 450k, so that's that sort of awkward price there. He's not going to be a keeper. Yes, he's dual position. He plays 17, but didn't think it was going to be a good a good option long term. He did score well this week though, so I can't say too much. Uh, four in there. Ruben Garrick with 52. So had a bunch of early tackle breaks. They didn't play too well, obviously the Manly boys, but he's still um. You yeah, had a very solid game and, and no negatives there with you know five kick defusals. Sorry, no neg no negatives other than just the, the four missed tackles, which is uh, you know very normal for someone in the fullback position these days, especially when you're getting beat as you're the last line of defence. But you yeah, know really solid game, eight tackle breaks and 171 meters. So if you picked up Garrick, you're happy with that. 
that 52 is under his price though. So you you know, you're paying you're paying for that type of score. So it's pretty much hitting his uh hitting his uh hitting his price point or what he's you know should be scoring. Lucky Croker, if you've held on to him this long, you get another 52 in a really important round. So my thoughts with him right now is he's scoring better than his average of 45. So can you keep him for a bit longer? I think you can. I don't think there's any rush in in picking uh, in upgrading him. He's scoring better than Braley, and a lot of us are still holding Braley there. So that's that with uh, with Croker. You can make your decision on him in the next few weeks. If you feel like you, you want, want to use his cash and upgrade him, then go for it. Uh, Kepi with a 50. So he's done actually pretty well this year, surprisingly. Gained 115K. Will be a little bit more after this week. I don't think he's too fantasy relevant at this stage, but... Yeah, well done to him. Ryan Sutton with 49, solid score. Just a little bit under the keeper level status, guys, so I'd be holding off. Uh, Starling with a nice 48 off the bench. Not worst trade end of the year. Anyway, Marty to power, 54 minutes for his 48. So again, no no attacking stats was annoying for him uh, and any of his owners. So a 40-odd last week, or 43, I believe, uh, and then a 48 this week. So two lower scores, and that's kind of been the worry with, with him. And I suppose we'll see if that's going to be the worry with Tama Lolo as well for a lot of us that picked him up this week. Uh, so that's to power. Sully came back and you know scored a decent one off the uh, off the wing. Or no, he ended up playing the centers actually. Uh, scored 48, which was good. If you picked him up as a cash out, then well done to you. I don't think many people would have though, just because he was a bit of a you know laid in, hasn't played for a while type of player. Uh, if we move to Corey Harrow, we're in Naira with 48 in his 79 minutes. It just went off in the last minute. I actually didn't see the end of it. Did anyone know in the comments? Just let me know what happened to him. Just so I don't have to go bother searching it. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, four tackle breaks, two turnover tackles, thankfully, to get him up to 48. But, yeah, just not – hasn't hit the heights that he – that we'd hoped after that few, you know, few decent games there. Just just not running the ball as much. He just – he's been way under 100 metres each of the last bunch of weeks. Whew. Sorry. Um, each of the last bunch of weeks there, which is not good for his tackle breaks. Um, and then, yeah, 29 tackles for four misses is not really ideal. We're looking for 30-plus tackles for, like, two to three misses to get him in those 50s. Tarpany with 46, Rappen with 43 if you're holding on to Rupps. That's a decent score for your buy round. Uh, Tarpany, I don't think meant too many people would have. Kyle Lawton, if you're still holding on to him, 41 was okay. Sort of, you know, scoring similar to what he's priced at in that one. Cop that, just six missed tackles this week and no no real attacking stats apart from the two tackle busts, so that's that. Um, with Lawton, I'd be looking to upgrade very, very soon. Hudson Young came back and got 39. He's 80 minutes, I wouldn't be touching him. Morgan Harper, if you're holding him, you get 34 and a beaten side. You can't really complain too much with that. Yeah, so we moved to Savage, and he actually got nine nine points in one play as well. So if he didn't have that, I think he was at to, up to 20 points really quickly just based on the fact that he had the half a tackle that... Yeah, made Brad Parker lose the ball, which I don't think he really did too much. But anyway, picks up nine points from that, the turnover tackle and the try saver. So that's that, 26 points. Yeah, just even, in, you know, I didn't expect, even expect them to win. So for them to win and him not do anything, what, what can we expect when they get smashed the next bunch of weeks? So just keep that in mind, guys, when you're picking up these guys going forward into these last few rounds. Pick the guy from the best team, right? They're usually going to score better. I could have egg on my face in the next few videos when Tafe doesn't go as well, but... We'll have to wait and see. He did well last week in 20 to 20 minutes. Let's see if he can do it again. Bellame simply got injured this time, so it looks like he might be out for a few weeks, unfortunately, after his big uh, big score last week. If you've picked him up in the last few weeks, you, yeah, your, your price rises have uh, stalled there. Parker was 14. James for 15 minutes. Oh, and the last one, Jason Saab with seven points. Wow. So he's been great for a bunch of weeks now, up over, up over 200K. And then when you know the Eagles aren't doing as well, when Tommy's not there to help out, he gets 51 run meters, you know, four four missed tackles, sorry, four errors there, sorry, um, and one tackle break. So yeah, nothing special at all for Jace. But that's um that's the update for Thursday night's game, guys. So I hope that helped with the cash outs. I hope this helped with you know the players you've got in this game. I only had the one with Corey Harawira and Naira, and I did learn about the Joseph Suwali thing. I I didn't actually. When it, when, it, when it got mentioned to me, I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I've heard them say that before. But he can't wear anything from 1 to 18 because he is too young. Because uh, he's 17, he can't wear anything gambling-related. So then they've got Tab Sponsor on the shirt. So he gets named in 21 every week and then gets put into the team last minute um, yeah, as to how it works. So he should be playing this week, and that helps my team. I think that gives me 10 players for the week, which would be flying. But that's that, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Please do like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one, guys.